This tute's going to talk about the 68, 95, 99.7 rule for normal distributions. Normal distributions. So what does all that mean? Well, let's start with what is a normal distribution. A normal distribution is something that comes up in nature quite a lot. It's a graph, a, a distribution of data that follows a bell shape, sort of like this. Whee! Like that. Looks like a bell. And it comes up in nature all the time because you'll find this pattern reoccurs for all sorts of reasons. If you look at um, heights, for example, you'll often have in a population some people who are quite short and then a lot of people who are roughly average, you know, kind of in the middle of heights and then some people who are very, very tall. But you'll have not that many who are very, very tall and not that many who are very, very short. So these frequencies are low down here and these frequencies are high of the sort of average sized people. So that's why this shape occurs. If you think about weights as well, it works the same way or, you know, um, like weights of babies when they're born or things like that, it, it occurs a lot. And so in statistics, we've come up with a whole bunch of different rules that you can apply to normal distributions because they appear so often. And so this rule that we learn in further maths is one of those that applies to distributions that follow this shape. And you could see this referred to in a couple of different ways. If you see the terminology normal distribution, then you know distribution, sorry I can't talk and write at the same time. Um, if you see that phrase, you know that this is the rule that they want you to apply. They might also say uh, it has a bell shape or they could say, they might use the word approximate as well. Approximate. Um, they'll say this distribution is approximately bell shaped or this follows a normally distributed curve or, so curve is another word, um, the, the curve has a bell shape to it, um, the, the, the normally shaped uh, distribution is approximately normal or <laughs> whatever. Any combination of these words in an exam question are saying to you, hey, use that rule, 6895 99.7. So what is the rule? Well, it has to do with the mean and the standard deviation. And we did a tute on working those things out. So go back and have a look. It's tute number seven on summarizing data. And we show you how to work them out on your calculator and that type of thing. And these two pieces of information are vital for applying this rule. What the rule says is that 68% of all the data in a distribution lies within one standard deviation of the mean. And the next part is that 95% of all the data in a distribution lies within two standard deviations of the mean. And 99.7% of all the data lies within three standard deviations of the mean. So what does that look like on a graph? I'm going to show you on three separate graphs so you can visualize each of these parts of the rule separately. Let's say we have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. The mean is in the center of a normal distribution. It's right here, roughly in the middle of that bell. And the standard deviations either side are according to their even widths and the numbers apply according to what our scale is. So if our mean is 100, when we go one standard deviation either side, so this is one standard deviation down and this is one standard deviation up, excuse me, not two, one, We've gone 100 minus 10 to get 90 and 100 plus 10 to get 110 because we've started from the mean and we've travelled 10 either side, once down and once up, 
to get us one standard deviation either side of this mean, which is in the middle. It's this balancing point of the scale right here. So if I draw a line here at 90 and another one here at 110, 68% of the data in this bell curve will lie within that region there. Between 90 and 110 is 68% of the data. For this one over here, I'm going to travel two standard deviations away from the mean. So two standard deviations either side looks something like this. This is down one standard deviation. This is down two standard deviations. This is up one standard deviation and up two standard deviations. So this number here is 100. Going down one standard deviation gets us to 90. So going down another standard deviation, minusing another 10, will get us to 80. And going 100 plus 10 plus 10 gets us to 120, because this one here is 110. So between 80 and 120, which is two standard deviations either side of this mean in the middle, you have 95% of all the data lies within that region there. And accordingly, for this third one over here, we're going to travel three standard deviations either side. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. This is one standard deviation down, two standard deviations down, three standard deviations down, and up one, up two, and up three. So this number was 100. One standard deviation down was 90. Two standard deviations down was 80. So three standard deviations down is 70. Up one is 110. Up two is 120. So up three is 130. So between 70 and 130 lies 99.7% of all the data lies within that range there. So let's do that again with some different numbers. Say this time my mean is 40 and my standard deviation is 5. The mean is in the middle here and I'm going to travel one standard deviation either side for this one, two for this one and three standard deviations for this one. So the mean is 40. So what is one standard deviation either side of 40? Well, it's 40 minus 5, which is 35, and 40 plus 5, which is 45. So between 35 and 45 lies 68% of all the data. Now for this one over here, mean of 40, we're going to travel 1, 2, and 1, 2. So 40 minus 5 is 35, minus another 5 is 30. 40 plus 5 is 45, plus another 5 is 50. So between 30 and 50 lies 95% of all the data. And again, over here, we're going to travel 3. So 1, 2, 3 standard deviations either side. We have a mean of 40, so we've got 40 minus 5 is 35, minus another 5 is 30, minus another 5 is 25. And again going up, 40 plus 5 is 45, plus another 5 is 50, plus another 5 is 55. So between 25 and 55 lies 99.7% of all the data. And plotting them all on the same graph, it would look something like this. Say I have a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2. So my mean is in the middle here at 10. I go one standard deviation either side and I have 8 and 12. Two standard deviations each side, I get to 6 and 14. Three standard deviations either side, I get to 4 and 16. Now between 8 and 12, we have 68% of the data. Between 6 and 14, I have 95% of the data. And between 4 and 16, I have 
100% of the data. Okay, so just to practice that a couple of times, say you have a mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 3. Between what interval does 95% of that data lie? How do you work that out? So the first thing you need to do is to put your mean in the middle, draw yourself a quick bell curve and say, okay, in the middle is 15 because that's my mean. And now I want to know 95%, the interval for that. So is that one standard devi deviation away, two standard deviations away, or three standard deviations away? 68, 95, 99.7. It's this one in the middle, so it's the two standard deviations away. So I want to know 15 minus 3 minus 3, and 15 plus 3 plus 3. So 15 minus 3 is 12 minus another 3 is 9, and 15 plus 3 is 18, plus another 3 is 21. So the answer to between what interval lies 95% of the data, it's between 9 and 21. Let's try another one. Say you have a mean of 102 and a standard deviation of 15. Between what interval does 99.7% of the data lie? So does that correspond to one standard deviation, two or three? The 99.7 corresponds to three standard deviations away. So we're going to put our mean in the middle at 102 and we're going to go down at 15, down another 15 and down another 15 and up three lots of 15. So 102 minus 15 is 87, minus another 15 is 72, and minus another 15 is 57. And I didn't just do that in my head, by the way, I cheated and did that on the calculator. But that's how you would do it, you just quickly do it on the calculator. I'm not that great at maths in my head. So again, 102 plus 15 is 117, plus 15 is 132, and plus 15 is 147. So now we want to know what percentage of data, what's the interval that lies 99.7% of the data? It is between 57 and 147. So let's do one more. Say you have a mean of 291 and you have a standard deviation of 17, for example. Where, what, between what interval does 68% of the data lie? This corresponds to one standard deviation either side, so we just need to do 291 in the middle, and we need to say minus 17 to get this one, and plus 17 to get this one. So 291 minus 17 is 274, and 291 plus 17 is 308. So 68% of the data lies between 274 and 308. And that's the basic way this rule operates. Um, in part two of the video, I'm going to go over the corresponding percentages and how that works. Um, so stay tuned.